Welcome to this introduction to creating geographically dispersed Microsoft clusters using DoubleTake availability. The first step in the process is to install Microsoft failover clustering on each node in the cluster. I'm installing here on SQL node 1, having previously installed on a node called SQL node 2. I then use failover cluster manager to create a new cluster. I'll add both of my nodes into the cluster. I'll run through the usual Microsoft validation steps. There are a few uh, issues relating to storage, which is not a concern because that's what we're going to address by creating the GeoCluster disk. I'm going to use a cluster name of SQL Cluster 1 because eventually this will become a SQL Server cluster. Give it an IP address. Eventually the cluster is brought online. The default quorum configuration isn't suitable for a two node cluster. So quickly configure my uh, cluster quorum configuration using the node and file share majority option. I'll configure a file share witness folder on the network. This will assist with uh, cluster arbitration in the event of a single node failure. The next step is to install DoubleTake availability. It's important that DoubleTake is installed after the nodes have been added to the cluster. Double take must be installed on each node in the cluster. Installing double take on existing cluster nodes ensures that double take cluster resources are registered on each server in the cluster. I need to assign storage to each node in the cluster. Because we're using a GeoCluster disk, we need to assign similar drive letters and similar capacities on each node in the cluster. For now, I'm going to simply partition a single disk drive into two drives in order to create two GeoCluster replicated disks. One will contain my SQL data and one will contain my SQL log files. To create the GeoCluster replicated disk, I'm going to create a new blank service or application. By right clicking on the new service or application, I can create a new resource. Double take has been installed on each node in the cluster, so I could create a double take source connection to protect an existing Microsoft cluster, or I can create a GeoCluster replicated disk. I want to create a GeoCluster replicated disk, and as we see, a new GeoCluster replicated disk has been created and is configured for offline. Configuration is needed. Select properties. Choose an appropriate resource name, such as E colon GeoCluster replicated disk. Quickly flick through the remaining tabs. Just verify configuration. Some tabs such as shadow copies are only available after the resource has been brought online. You see the usual double take options for mirror type, uh, level of compression, orphan files. In this case, I will select delete orphan files as we're going to be protecting a SQL server. Um, finally, to choose the disk to replicate, and this is going to be the E drive. Choose a network to replicate the traffic through. Select OK and then enable the resource. I'm going to very quickly repeat that same process for the F drive to create something called F GeoCluster replicated disk. Once the GeoCluster disks have been created, they can be used for any cluster aware application such as SQL Server, Hyper-V Server, Exchange Server or a file server.
I can see in failover cluster manager that both the E drive and the F drive have been brought online and the status of targets is shown as OK. To understand what this means in double take terms, we'll need to launch the double take replication console. The replication console shows a replication set corresponding to both the E drive and the F drive and shows a connection from the active node to the passive node. We can use failover cluster manager to relocate the geocluster disks onto the second node in the cluster. By default, a geocluster replicated disk has a 30 second inbuilt timeout as a safety mechanism in case you are replicating data over a low bandwidth connection. When the 30 second timeout has expired, the geocluster replicated disk will come back online, but will be hosted by the second node in the cluster. We can quickly verify in the replication console that in fact the geocluster replication connections have moved to the second node in the cluster, in this case SQL node 2. In some environments, a 30 second timeout for the geocluster disk may not be appropriate. It is possible to change the geocluster timeout using the cluster command as seen on the screen. In this case, I'm going to change it to three seconds. It could actually be changed to zero seconds in some circumstances. I'll make the same change for the F drive geocluster replicated disk. I'm going to repeat the process of moving the cluster resource from one node to the other. And this time we can see the offline pending is actually just three seconds. So that example just shows a very simple, graceful move from one cluster node to the other. What I'll just show you now is if I forcibly power off one node in the cluster. So the resource is running on SQL node 2. I've powered off the virtual machine running SQL node 2. You can see very quickly the failure is detected. And the, again, we have the three second delay for the cluster resources brought back online again. The status of the geocluster disk changes to online connecting to SQL node 2. I'll power up the uh, SQL node 2 server and we will see that the uh, connection is again established. The last stage in the process we may wish to do is to remove the geocluster disks from the new service or application. We can delete the new service or application we can see that the geocluster disks are presented in the available storage folder. Please visit us at www.bcap.com.au.